Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. Bex here today to film the back to school book tag. This one's been on my list for a little bit and is finally the right time of year to film it. It is Labor Day weekend right now and the kids in Ontario go back to school next week. So perfect timing. By the time this gets up, those kids will have probably been at school for about a week. And I was not tagged by anybody. I was just searching the internet and I found this tag, found my way back to the originator who is Bangity Bangs. I was not aware of their channel back when they were still posting videos. This is originally from a number of years ago, but the questions are still very good. So I thought it'd be fun to go through them. There's 10 different questions and they all have a back to school theme to them, which makes sense. So let's get started. The first question is fresh new outfit, book with the best dressed characters. And I will admit I had a bit of trouble with this one just because I tend to not read books where what they're wearing is a large focus or something I even really think about, especially with nonfiction, it doesn't really come up as much. But I decided to pick the Royal Diaries book about Elizabeth I. This is like Queen Elizabeth. This takes place in the 1500s. It's a middle grade book. And they do talk about the clothes that they wear in here to some degree. But even from the cover, painting, you get an idea of what people in those days wore. There was a lot of layers. There's a lot going on, especially if you were royalty. So I feel like you could consider Elizabeth a pretty well-dressed person, especially when you compare this book to a lot of other books that I have on my shelves. Question number two is new lab partner. This is a new sci-fi book you want to read. Everyone has been talking about how high we go in the dark by Sequoia Nagamatsu. I don't own this book yet, but I have heard enough people talking about it that I am interested in reading it. As far as I understand, it's a collection of short stories, but it follows different people when the ice starts to melt and it releases a virus or some sort of disease that has been frozen in the ice for many years. So it has a post-apocalyptic feel to it. And I do enjoy a post-apocalyptic book. And I've heard mostly very good things about this. And, but it just generally sounds like a sci-fi book that I would really enjoy. Question number three is your favorite teacher. And this is a book with a great mentor. And for that, I have to talk about a book that I very recently finished, and that is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a book that many of you will be familiar with. But for those of you who are maybe not so in the know with Taylor Jenkins Reid's books, uh, Carrie Soto is a tennis player. She grew up playing tennis and she has retired, but then has decided to come back to reclaim or hold on to her title of the most Grand Slam wins. The reason I'm mentioning this book is because Carrie's father, Javier, is her coach and mentor in this book. And he is really the heart of this story. Carrie lost her mother when she was young. And so it's always been her and her dad. Javier is such a kind character. He is such a good mentor because of course, he's teaching her things both on and off the court. And so for that reason, I absolutely had to pick this book. Question four is new supplies because who doesn't love going shopping and getting new binders and folders and pens and pencils and all that. I know I loved that experience. And so for that, the question is favorite new reading or writing accessories. And I want to talk about some bookmarks that I've got over the last year or so from fellow booktubers. The first is these two, this is from a Leora, Books with Leo was her previous name. She's recently rebranded on YouTube to Leora Eileen. And she was also Mind Daisies, was like her shop. And so I got these from there because yeah, shiny, beautiful. She's got a whole tarot theme set of bookmarks. And then also these are a little more recent. They have to do with the magical readathon, but these were created by G over at Book Roast. You can tell I have a certain aesthetic that I enjoy in terms of shiny bookmarks, but yeah, so I have been loving these uh, and using them. They're just, oh, they're so pretty. Question five, old friends, a book you want to reread or a favorite friendship in literature? I couldn't really think of a favorite 
overall friendship that I kind of hold above all else. So I kind of leaned more towards the book you want to reread. And then this, you could say, also has some great friendships in it. But I really am looking to reread the Hunger Games trilogy. I initially read them in 2010, 2011, and then I reread them in 2014. So it's been nine years since I read this series. And I feel like I am due for a reread. Uh, maybe in 2024, 10 years later. I mean, I've changed as a person in 10 years. I've grown. So it'll be interesting to see if I kind of take anything new from these books. And then, as I mentioned, you could argue that there are some great friendships in here that Katniss and Peeta have with fellow tributes and other people that they meet along the way, like at the Capitol and, and whatnot. And so, sure, there's some good friendships in here, but this is definitely more of the, like, I just want to want to reread it. Question six, ready it for sweater weather, which not really the case yet. It's very hot this weekend. We've kind of, I think we're getting that last like heat wave. Mother Nature is reminding us that summer is not quite over, even though we are in the very beginning of September. So I'm definitely not wearing a sweater yet, but I'm sure I will be soon. And the question related to sweater weather is a book featuring cold weather. And for that, I'm going with The Children's Blizzard by David Laskin. This is about an 1888 blizzard that uh, came down from Canada and affected a great part of the Midwest in the United States. And it came on so quickly and the word didn't really get out in time because there were weather stations then, but obviously the word couldn't travel quite as quickly as it can now in terms of weather that's coming in. And so there were people that froze to death out in the fields trying to come home from school. This isn't a great book. I think I gave it three stars. You really have to like weather and like the meteorology of it all, I think, to really love this book. But in terms of people's stories and those who managed to survive even though they were stuck outside, uh, it's pretty intense. And so, yeah, if this book is uh, maybe great to read in winter in terms of just getting the whole feel for it, but you would definitely want to have a sweater on if you were stuck in this blizzard. Question number seven is Open House, a book that made a memorable, good or bad, first impression. <laughs> I chose Why Women Have Better Sex Under Socialism and Other Arguments for Economic Independence by Kristen R. Godsey. And I picked this because the title is very flashy. Like it is clickbaity basically. It's a clickbaity book title. Les and I actually said yes to receiving this book as an ARC a few years ago and I was a little skeptical because I was like, okay, how, how good is this going to be? Is this going to be more about the title and just trying to drag you in to what this is talking about because it is nonfiction? But as you can see from these tabs, I did learn some stuff in here and Les and I did actually do a dual review on this when we read it. We were not in the same location, so it's one of those ones where like, one of us says our thing and then we cut to the other one saying their thing. So it's a, l a little bit of a weird setup, but we were trying, we were trying some new stuff to see what didn't and didn't work. So we do have a review of this. This is sort of a weird first impression, but the book I think did back up the title and explain why women do have better sex under socialism. Question eight, too early for this, a book you would get out of bed for. So what's that book that you have really enjoyed and you would get up early to read it if the opportunity arose. And for that, I'm choosing my favorite book that I've read so far this year, and that is To Be Taught, If Fortunate by Becky Chambers. This is my first Becky Chambers book, and I just had a feeling that I was going to like her stories. This one is a standalone about four people who are on a spaceship. They've left everything behind on Earth. They are, they go into sort of a, a cryo sleep and they are being awoken when they land on a few different planets and they're researching and sending that research back to Earth, knowing that they're never gonna see their families again. And so it's a lot of, a lot of big stuff that these characters are dealing with, but also you get that cool sci-fi aspect of traveling on a spaceship and just discovering these planets and seeing what life is there. Uh, and so that combined with these big questions is just such, such a good book. There were moments that really moved me. And so I would absolutely get up early to read this book. 
Question number nine, the textbook costs how much? <laughs> so this probably relates more to university students because I didn't really have to buy textbooks in high school, but obviously I did in university and they can be really, really expensive sometimes. So this is a book you spent too much money on. Just Us by Claudia Rankin. Actually, sorry, Just Us, An American Conversation is the subtitle by Claudia Rankin. I had to read this for the Book 2 Prize back in 2021, and typically when I get assigned a group for that, I go see what's available at the library, and I try to check out as many of the books as I can from the library so I don't have to pay for them. This one, unfortunately, was not available there, and so I had to purchase it. And this book is, it's hardcover, it's printed on thick paper that you print, you can print pictures on because, as you can see, there are pictures in this book. And it's an interesting read in the sense that the format is definitely different than a lot of the nonfiction books that I have to read. It's a conversation about whiteness in America, uh, kind of focusing on different aspects and stories and anecdotes about things. And so it is an analysis of that, but because it is printed on this very fancy paper, it's hardcover, I paid $40 for this book. And it wasn't a book that I was really interested in reading. So yeah, that was a bit painful. And I, I don't know if I'd ever read it again, but I have to hold on to it because I paid so much money for it. The final question of the back to school tag is the best school in literature you want to attend. I decided to go with Jordan College and St. Sophia's, which are a few colleges at the Oxford of the His Dark Materials series. So this is the first book, The Golden Compass. I finished rereading this series last year. I originally read it when I was about nine or 10. So I picked up on a few more things, rereading it as an adult. I also read some of the little companion novellas, the very, very tiny books that go with this series, one of them is called Lyra's Oxford. You get a whole map of Oxford inside of it. And I just thought it was such a cool world to be in. And I think what I also like about it is that it's a university setting. So it's a little bit more mature than say like Hogwarts or something like that, which is kind of the other school that my mind does go to. Um, so I thought this would be kind of a cool alternative option because it is a bit more mature and there's just all these different cool things that you could study there. Those are my answers for the back to school book tag. If you are someone who is heading back to school and you're watching this video, good luck on your next semester. I hope you learn a lot. I hope things go relatively well. If you have any comments on any of the books that I mentioned as answers to these questions, let me know down below. As always, all of our links are in the down bar. You can go check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you later. Question six is ready for swether, swither, wither.